You see, here's something about the door we have to understand. That we're in a season of tremendous we shift. We have to be a people. We must choose to be a for people. The to make Jesus their magnificent obsession. It's time to be men and women of God. Great. I'm doing great. Glad to be back once again. How was your lunch? It was too good. Too good? Yeah, I'll have to talk to the chef then. <laughs> it was a great lunch and uh, ready to burn off some of those calories. <laughs> yeah. Push-ups. Drop and give me 20. <laughs> oh yeah, we're not in the military anymore. Anyway, yeah. we've, we've been talking about uh, Matthew chapter 24 and uh, the, the vacillation in opinions between whether we're in the the last days or whether we're not in the last days, whether, you know, all these trying times have come or they haven't. And, and uh, it's fascinating to me that it's not obvious. I remember back in, was it 75 or 6, I read Late Great Planet Earth. Me too. And it scared the spit out of me. And it, in a good way. But my my first reaction was, as a young man and newly saved really at that time was like lord i hope this doesn't happen now i want to live life a little bit good night <laughs> that, uh, yeah that was a dumb sentiment I, i'm telling you i would you know well but, i i was i i'm right there with you i read it and i thought what's the point of even applying for college jesus is <clears throat> most likely going to come back within the next week or two yeah see it messed us so. up didn't it <laughs> yeah yes but uh, so We've had an awareness of the theology or eschatology of end-time events since we first got saved. Mm -hmm. And it's really matured and progressed as uh, the Lord is bringing to pass certain aspects of His Scripture right before our very eyes. And we can't deny the fact that, just in our short lifespan, that we're seeing... Bible prophecy fulfilled that past generations never saw mm -hmm. and potentials for things that last past generations never saw. Now, I've been a moderate history buff. I love reading history and that. And that's why I can look at certain things that are taking place today and know that in history, they've never seen things like this. Right. And so for me, it's it's become pretty succinct and obvious that we are in a, a day and an age that this world's never experienced before to this extent. A standalone time. There's no comparison. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I, I, I see that as well. I think there, there are, like you said, uh, looking at history, there are some things that we can allude to, such as the days of Noah yeah. and the days of Lot where it talks about the same types of things that went on. Um, and you can look at the world today and see that it is very much the same. I mean, looking at the world, I mean, you know, people think that because people are well-dressed and they well-educated, supposedly, that all of the uh, disgusting things that people embrace, somehow they get a pass on that because they wear a nice suit and uh, and seem successful in the eyes of the world. But the reality is that spiritually, it's a very, very dark world. And that's, that's why I'm so glad that the Lord fills us with His light so that we can be a beacon to those that really uh, would reach out for, for the Lord and that hope. Oh, very much, very much. It is, it is a world filled with smoke and mirrors, deceptions and Persuado spiritual realities and matrix. Yeah. Um, yeah. The truth is to be found in one place only. It's, that's in the person of Jesus, period. And, I, you know, we've talked about this. I, I got so involved emotionally in the past election cycle that when it was blatantly obvious that there were things taking place that were not uh, on the up and up. Right. 
I got very angry because I'm a black and white, you know, that's the way God wired me, right and wrong, black and white. And, and I was so upset and getting angry all the time and the, finally the Lord rebuked me. He said, I didn't call you to that kingdom, I called you to this kingdom. Don't get so enmeshed in the world system that you neglect the ambassadorial calling that I gave you from this kingdom. And so I repented and I had to lay down the focus on so much of the world and focus more on the kingdom of God and how that's the solution to, the, to what's taking place in the world. And yes. that brought a lot more peace. Yeah, and, and that's not mm -hmm. obvious to the church nowadays because uh, it seems like many churches are embracing a social gospel that uh, we want to be just as relevant of the world. I've, I've seen people in churches do that. They will do things in align, alignment with or in conjunction with the world, worldly uh, programs of various sorts. The chameleon the, church. Yeah, I mean, it's about inclusion. We, you know, God loves everybody, so we're just going to let people come in, do whatever they want, and we're going to tell them that they're also children of God. Well, see, if we're no different than the world, what's the point? What is the point? The Word of God clearly teaches you're in the world, but not of this world. So yeah. how can people define the difference if there's nothing to be seen that's other? Yeah, I, I don't even know how it would get this uh, off the rails other than to say that uh, the enemy uh, d does not uh, sleep. No, he doesn't sleep or slumber. And, you know, neither does God. And so if we're resting in him, we're, we're safe. But, yeah. but um, you know, clearly Scripture, clearly scripture teaches that, that, that there's going to be a time when God has to cut all history off. Otherwise, he would lose even the very elect. Right. Even those that are persevering and hanging on with all their strength to the, the, the Word of God, there comes a time where even that, uh, you're in danger of falling away. And, you know, how often have we heard in our life, oh, the devil's just stupid. Are you kidding me? This is a being that's had eons of human history, never mind how long he was with God in heaven before that. Just the accumulation of wisdom and experience means he's far superior to our finite intellectual ability to even comprehend his machinations. Yeah. That's why we need the mind of Christ and why we need to be on guard, why we need to sensitize ourselves to the Word of God, to the Spirit of God, so we can rightly discern and uh, stop being foolish in underestimating you know, the wisdom of the enemy. I, to I totally agree with that. The... Uh... You know, people have said, why, why do you, you know, asked me before, why do you focus on, you know, the, all the negative end time stuff? It's like, no, I don't focus on it. I, I know, I know what it is because I can see it. But if I would speak about it, it's because so many people cannot see it. And it's not like I, I want people to be, uh, as we said last week, I don't want people to be afraid where they're cowering away, but realize that they are here for a purpose. Very much. And uh, with, um, if they can't see that there is darkness, then how would they know that there's, they need to show the light that they have? Well, yeah, I, again, I've had people say, oh, you're so sin conscious or negative conscious. No, no, I'm relationship conscious. Yeah. And so I'm not going to allow things to get in between my Lord and myself. And uh, right. I have to look at it that way. But also, it's not that I'm focusing on the negative. I'm aware of it because if I'm warned beforehand, I can prepare beforehand. And I'm not saying run to the hills and bury your head in the sand. I'm saying spiritually. Right. And that's, that's what I do when I'm reading the Word. You know, still times... When I read the Word, like when I first got saved, you've heard me tell this story, and I try and make it humorous, but reading the King James Bible at first was like reading a foreign language, you know, and I, it was just, and knocked me right out. I'd go to sleep within 15 minutes, and I'm yeah. a reader. But there's, through that process and the Lord revealing to me there's only one that doesn't want me to read the Word, mm -hmm. I would get up and walk around and read the Bible, knowing it was feeding my spirit, even though my understanding was blank at that time. 
And that was, that was a mercy and grace of God that he put into my spirit, that revelation. I didn't realize it was revelation. I just knew, it, well, at least it's feeding my spirit, man. And so even today, there's times I pick up the word, you know, I'm just reading and, and I know, okay, I'm not connecting with anything specific right now, but I know it's feeding my spirit, man. And those are, these are the words of life. Right. And so I do that. And then uh, as I continue in that process, something sparks. But, but again, that's, that's an idea for others that are struggling with, it's not making sense. Don't worry about it making sense here. Understand it's feeding your spirit. And at the appropriate time, God will release that in you and through you. And it'll be life. And so continue on. Um, let's, we're only going to do a couple more uh, chap, or chapters. Yes, chapters. Another couple more verses. Um, we left off last week talking about Matthew 24, 11. Many false prophets will arise and will least mislead many. Verse 12 says, but lawlessness, because lawlessness is increased, most people's loves will grow cold. Yes. How true is that? Incredibly true. This, the word teaches us first the natural, then the spiritual. So let's just reflect on the natural. Lawless, has lawlessness increased in the last few years? It's off the charts. Therefore, it's also increased in the realm of the spirit because God, the principle is first the natural, then the spiritual. Yeah. And again, I'm going to blame the church because we were to be the salt and the light and we again were infected by the world. We allowed the world in and then we want to compromise, as Mike was just saying, we want, to, we want to blend in, we want to be culturally relevant. Well, what if the culture of the day is demonic? Do I want to be culturally relevant in that? No. I want to be biblically relevant and bring truth and light into a dark situation so that relevance of the kingdom of heaven is now shining forth onto the darkness and they can come into reality. And that's where the church has missed it. That's where, uh, another pet preach, that's where Bible colleges are falling away because they want the, uh, the world's accreditation system. They want to be recognized as a, an accredited institution because that carries weight. And so in agreeing with governmental accreditation, they invite that government to have influence or society to have influence on what now is to be taught within the academic arena of Bible college. And so you, you start bringing in things that are not scriptural at best and mm -hmm. absolutely contrary at worst. And is it any wonder that when you go to Bible college, you come up with maybe a little bit of head knowledge, but more worldly input and influence than biblical. And that's, and then that's even in upper division that, you know, Theological seminaries. That's why I call them cemeteries. It leaves people powerless. It's, it, it's, it's such a mixture, and, and a little leaven leavens the whole. So you come out with a mixture, and you think you're ready to go into ministry and teach people how to be twice the sons of hell that you've become. And I'm sorry I'm saying it so bluntly, but if we don't stick with the word, I, I, my pet mantra, I guess, I know. if we don't stick with the word and we allow mixture, we enable the enemy to have access and inroads into our life and into our adventure in Christ. And so as much as I have studied over the years, I've learned to put it all down. I'm coming back to one thing. That's the Word of God. And, you know, I have to sort through the, the mounds piled higher and deeper, the mounds of mixture that was invested into me as I studied and, and sift through that and find any nuggets of truth that were there that were vested by the Spirit of God. Now, I'm not upset I went through the process. I'm grateful, but it has made me more aware of the mixture that is to be found. Yes, and because of that mixture, because it's so prevalent in the church today, uh, people cease to be speaking for the Lord. They become apostles of Satan. Because if they're preaching this inclusion and this, you know, this uh, uh, greasy grace message that you can live however you want and you're going to come to, you're, everyone's welcome in heaven. God loves everybody. It really, they're preaching a message that is leading people to hell. And I think one of the, you know, one of the key things that I've seen over the last, I don't know, several years is how important it is to know and discern the times because 
I think you, you, I'm sure that you see this, and I've seen this across the face of the earth. They, people come to you for prayer with the most horrible problems that you could ever face, but because some armchair quarterback that, that thinks he's a theologian because of a Google search engine, <laughs> um, you know, is preaching, oh, we don't have focus on the negative. No, but we, if you're, if people come to you with severe problems, they need an answer from God, you have to, you can't tell them, oh, just don't focus on it, brother. Don't focus on it. It's like, it doesn't make it go away. You have to have the power of God present. And if people aren't embracing the God of the Bible, then they have no power to help anybody. In fact, the opposite is true. Right. That's like uh, be warmed. You see somebody in need and you just, you don't help them. You just be warm, be filled, go about your way and you do nothing. Yeah. And that's unfortunately the picture we have, isn't it? It is. It really is. Especially nowadays. You're okay and I'm okay. And God really loves you and he wants you to prosper and he wants you to have nice cars, big houses. Yeah. Don't worry about your neighbor. Yeah. And, and we've whew, taken that the wrong way. It has. Do I believe God wants to prosper you? What's prosperity? What is biblical prosperity? Well, people say, well, you know, Abraham, he was the rich. And, uh, no, Solomon, he was rich. Do you know Solomon died in infamy? He did exactly what God told him not to do because all that God gave him corrupted him. And he, he married all those foreign wives and brought in all of their Ashtaroths, all their high places, all their false religions, and he destroyed everything. The only reason God didn't wipe him out is because of his covenant with his father, David. That's the only reason God hasn't dealt with a lot of us. It's because of our covenant with our Savior, Jesus. Mm -hmm. But if it went back to the law and to, to that, no. Power corrupts, ultimate power corrupts ultimately. Wealth can corrupt and ultimate wealth can corrupt ultimately. What is true biblical wealth? We talked about this well, the other day that I asked the Lord that one time, Lord, you said to store up our treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt. What is wealth to you? How do I store that there? And he waited and he finally said, wealth to me is people. It's relationship, it's people. And I went, oh, yeah. well, I can't take anything on this earth wealth wise to heaven. The only thing I got to take is my relationship with God, the character of Christ he's been gracious enough to develop in me. And those that I have seen come to the saving knowledge of Jesus because of the light that God has graciously allowed to be in my life. That's wealth. That's laying up for yourselves treasures in heaven, obedience to God. Yeah. So all of this other stuff is, is fluff. And it's, it's here to test us. Whether you have tremendous wealth or whether you have abject poverty in the world, God has given everybody the grace they need for the situation they're in. Everybody. What do we do with that? I totally agree with that. The, uh, I think a lot of times people, they look at the um, physical or the carnal aspects that you would attribute success to, such as financial gain and uh, fancy expensive cars and big homes and, and mansions and Lear jets. And now, you know, I say that, but I say that with an explanation that I'm not saying God can't give us those things for a purpose or even the, the planes, but where it differs in our lives is that is not God's approval upon us. Those are tools that God gives us. And I it believe. shouldn't be something we're trying to attain to per se. Exactly. And because I, that can become our idol. I, I, if you would allow me, I remember this testimony that you told. <laughs> God gave you all kinds of wonderful blessings. I mean, big, nice, beautiful blessings. And, uh, but then he told you to give them away, all of them. And it's like, so it's not like God doesn't want you to have a nice car for your ministry so that you're not breaking down as you travel all over the United States or for, or for your life for that matter. But is the car a tool for you? Is it something the Lord gave you to, to help you? Or is that your idol? That, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get rid of the car, Lord, I'm sorry, I, I just can't do it. Or I can't get rid of the plane, or I can't get, you know, if, if anything 
um, becomes an idol, then it is uh, useless in our hands to, as far as glorifying God. And it becomes a, sat a status symbol of success in ministry. I've had people see, tell me that. That is the world's measure. That's not God's measure. It is. The status symbol, and there's not even a status symbol. The measure of success in the kingdom of God is, did you do what he told you to do? Exactly. Not what you can gain in this life. Did you do what he told you to do? That makes you successful. Nothing in this world compares to that. You're not going to get to heaven because you became a millionaire and he's going to say unto you, well done, good and faithful servant, unless he's called you into the marketplace to be successful so that you can sow into the kingdom of God in whatever way he deems. That's how that works. Yeah, well, in this age, because, uh, and the Bible talks about this, people become selfish and uh, put their needs above anyone's, and they're ungrateful and unthankful. In that, in that um, arena or in that culture, uh, a lot of times people that are preaching get confused, apparently, because I've had ministers tell me this, you know, this is God's stamp of approval on me. How many ministers do you know that drive this kind of car? Or how many, you know, it's uh, my wife and I have matching cars and they're both, you know, $200,000 each. It's like, uh, I don't think that's the purpose that God's called us to. Like I said, I know there's somebody out there saying, can I have a nice car? Yes, of course you can. You just can't allow things to have you. Yeah, it shouldn't uh, become your identity. The minute you would trade your car for an anointing to heal the sick, then you've missed it. Yeah. Or obedience to Christ. Or obedience, or even simple obedience to Christ. If you can't obey the Lord, then those things uh, are in your life to trip you up, not to verify what a wonderful person we are. So the second part of this verse talks about, because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. So... Why then, within the church, do we see so many lukewarm Christians? Because their love has grown cold. They're not focused on what they should be focused on. They're focused on the things of this world. And, I, you know, one of the things that when they, uh, in certain states, they legalized marijuana. Well, now certain states, they legalized everything. But, you know, all of a sudden, these number of Bible colleges that I'd heard about in those those particular states, not only would the students go out on break and smoke and toke and do all that, some of the professors would do that too. Now, how could the standard change from one day to the next when the Lord said what he did about pharmacy and mind-altering substances? See, that's yeah. that's where we've come to is there's no black and white definitive truth it's again what fits for me it's very malleable it's not it's not people following the teachings of the lord i know uh, what you're talking about because i know people that went to certain schools and they told me exactly that that uh, yeah. i mean they're out smoking dope because it's legal now somehow they got the idea because it's legal it's no longer a sin yeah and the standard uh, of the world yeah and so uh people that i knew that had been in ministry for years were flying to states where they could buy buy dope These because it was yeah. it was now it's legalized it's no longer a sin and it's like no we we don't we don't get our instruction I from think, the world we I get it from the word about this that was hidden in their heart as they were supposed leaders in the church a lot of them yeah the hidden secrets of the heart God is revealing. How? Lawlessness is increased. The love of many is wax cold. Listen, nothing happens in this world God's not aware of. And maybe at times, I'm not going to say he initiates sin, but he allows things. Yeah. And it's revealing hearts right now. And if you've changed because society's mores have changed, then you were never fully sold out to the kingdom of God. At best, you were in confusion because you were never taught correctly. But at worst, you're a lukewarm, compromising individual. 
That's for me and you too. Yes, absolutely. So I'm not picking on any. Do you understand? We we either believe truth or we don't. We either believe God or we don't. There's no in between, especially at the end of the age. I'd rather that you were hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out. And and a lot of this is being exposed. Thank God, but oh no, it's it's heartbreaking. Well, when you when you think about uh, in this day that we're in, when people's love grows cold, uh, what happens if if you're in a marriage and your love grows cold? What what is the fruit of that? We fell out of love. Yeah. So suddenly you're on a you're thinking about uh, divorce. You're thinking about things worse than divorce. Uh, what happens when your love grows cold for your children? Because you know, hey, I'm a person too. I need to meet my own needs, so uh, they don't need as much food. And I th know people think that's a ridiculous, uh, a ridiculous premise. But uh, the fact is, I see people all the time out wearing winter coats, and their little babies are in t-shirts. Yeah, you know, 30 degree weather. Yeah. And why? Because they they have enough uh, self love to think about themselves. Hey, I'm cold but not enough love for others to even make sure that their children are clothed. Yeah. And this is a very common thing. So, and that's just a small marker to the age we're living in when people grow cold to, um, their, their love grows cold for others, for family members, it goes across the board. It's just about them. People look at themselves, what do I want? What do I deserve? And then they kind of live their life that way. Isn't it interesting that he says that father will turn against son, daughter against mother, vice versa, all of these in that day. And why would they do that if they were not self-seeking? Yeah, It's about me, myself, and I. You're a, way down the list. But the Bible teaches esteem others better than yourself. Lay down your life for others especially right. those you're in covenant with, i.e. marriage, children. Yes. I, and you know, so many parents say, I, you know, I don't owe you anything. Well, it was your choice by the act that you and that the mother of your children engaged in to bring them into the world. So yes, you do. Yes, you do have an obligation. That's right. how, hello. Yeah. How, <laughs> how do you not stop. see that? Right. How stop. do people not see that? But that's that's the time that we're in, and people might think a lot of see a lot of believers think, well, I've never seen that. Well, then you, you've been semi sheltered at the, the very least, because I see that kind of thing a lot. Yes, being out and traveling around and being out, you know, in front of different groups. I, I because see that it's a not lot. the norm to us. Because we understand some things, but how many people that's Especially, it doesn't stand out. If if those you run around with, those you associate with, that's the way they all think, heard speak. It's well, that's just the way that we thought that was normal. No. Yeah, it's horrible, but it happens. I yeah. mean, you think you think that people wouldn't do that, and well, that's horrible. People wouldn't really do that, Mike. Yeah, they would. I had one guy that was telling me he was upset because his boss didn't give him a raise. He said. I can't even afford to buy my child a pair of shoes. And he was very uh, angry when he said that. But only a half an hour later, he was telling a story about how he had bought beer for the entire car club, and it was over $100. So he chose to do something for himself and let his child go without shoes, but somehow still blamed it on somebody else. On somebody else. Yeah. So those kind of things do happen. Yes, they do. We're askew. We are. Well, we went a little bit over time, but we love you guys. Thanks for sitting in with us. And if we sound like we're judgmental, we're not trying to be judgmental. We're speaking to us too. Yeah. I mean, this burns passionately in both of our hearts. We got to be a people of the word and hearing God's voice and following the spirit of God. Amen. So we encourage you to get in the word, spend time with the Lord, get to know him. Boy, get to know him. Never been a better time because he's, Access to his presence now has never been as easy as it is now because the time is short and he wants as many as he can to come to him. And so let's end in prayer. Go ahead and pray. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, we just lift up 
all those that are listening, all those that are tuning in, all those that, that uh, hear your word, we just lift them up before your throne. We ask you, Father, bless them. Give them ears to hear and eyes to see. Let them see what's going on so that they can be effective for the cause of Christ and the, and the gospel. And we just pray your blessing upon them, Father, that meet their needs uh, as they bring them before you. We just stand in agreement that your will be done in each and every life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See you next week. Bless you.